Welcome to the Builders Podcast, episode 83. Michael DeLon, write a book to build authority, create a compelling message. Before we jump into this episode, please subscribe to this podcast, hit that notification bell if you're on YouTube, and after a listen, please give us a thumbs up, like, and share if we've earned it. With your help, we can reach more people and deliver these valuable from the trenches lessons to those that need it. Enjoy the episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another The Builders. Today, we are joined by Michael DeLon. Welcome to the show, Michael. Matt, thanks for having me. It's going to be a fun, fun conversation. I'm I'm excited. I, I'm really looking forward to this. Um, we so m- probably the, for those of you that don't know who Michael is, <laughs> probably some of you don't know. I don't know. He's a pretty popular guy, though. I'm, I'm, <laughs> where where um, all your life? I mean, come on. <laughs> but uh, Michael, you're you're a you're a uh, marketing strategist. You help people uh, with publishing books uh, that uh, helps position them as an expert, I believe, something Absolutely. along those lines. Yeah, we help, um, we help you create a book without writing a word. We'll talk more about that. Oh, I like that. Okay. So uh, we're going to uh, talk about your story, how you got started, kind of your entrepreneurial journey and stuff and your story. And then we can kind of segue into talking about stories or whatever happens out of that conversation. We're just going to go with it and uh, see where it takes us. So do you want to, I'm going to, I'm going to throw it to you. If you want to just take some, I don't know if you want the small, the short version or the long version or in between, okay. uh, but uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, how you got started in and uh, doing what you're doing today and uh, what that journey looks like. Sure. Yeah. I'll tell you the long story in a short time period. So you got to listen fast. Okay. So, <laughs> First of all, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Been married 32 years. I've got four children, two sons who are like 26 and 23, who are biological, two daughters who are adopted. They're 14 and soon to be 12. We fostered for eight years, and that's where my daughters came from is the foster care system here in Little Rock. Wow. Okay, so my wife and I got married in 90. We The first five years of our marriage were like this. We fought each other because we were complete opposites. And even though she and I both grew up in church, Matt, nobody told us how to be married. Mm. And so mm-hmm. after five years of kind of just walking on eggshells and fighting, we went to a marriage conference from a ministry called Family Life, part of Campus Crusade for Christ. And we sat in a ballroom for a weekend as they unpacked God's blueprints for marriage. I didn't know he had blueprints. So we took those blueprints, started implementing them. That changed our marriage and our life. Now, during that period of time, I was at, I was selling Christian radio, okay? And, and this was in Indiana. And what I found out, after two years, nobody wanted to buy Christian radio, man. They wanted to sell their products and services. So I mm. had a decision to make. I had to become either really, really good at selling or really good at marketing. So I chose marketing. I read the books, followed the gurus, went to the seminars, learned how to do marketing for small business owners. So my business would grow as my client's business would grow and it became pretty successful. Fast forward to 2000, um, God let me out of that radio station to a startup.com back when Amazon was just starting. Do you remember when like William Shatner was on the radio talking about the world's largest bookstore? I was selling websites and banner ads to car dealerships and hospitals who didn't have a website at all. And so that company, Matt, was ahead of its time. That Mm -hmm. means it went bankrupt. And so (laughs) two years later, I'm standing in in my living room going, God, what am I supposed to do now? Well, he, he laid it on my heart. He's like, Michael, I want you to ministry to families. And I want you at Family Life, the ministry that ran that marriage conference. And so I said, great. Ends up, we had to raise our financial support for two years because it's a missionary organization. Moved from Indiana down to Little Rock. Thought I was in Nirvana. Why would I ever do anything other than help marriages the way we were helped? So six years later, right. I was on the leadership team of that ministry. They started going through those corporate reorganizations. Well, after the third reorg, I got kicked off the leadership team and started being shuffled around the ministry to do other things, right? Mm -hmm. That was the beginning of a two-year, as I call it, my prison term because I was Mm -hmm. in a job that I hated at a ministry that I loved. Well, after two years, I I got fed up. I said, God, I got to get out of this place. He said, what do you want to do? I said, I want to go help small business owners with marketing because they hate it and I love it. He said, go. So January 1st, 2013, Matt, I escaped from prison. 
started a marketing consulting firm in Little Rock. I'd come out and talk with you. I'd say, Matt, I can help you grow your business. You'd meet with me. We'd have a great conversation. And you'd say, Michael, what have you done for the last few years? Who have you helped? I said, well, help build marriages and families at Family Life. And you say, oh, that's honorable, Michael. Way to go. Oh, look, look at the time. I got another <laughs> meeting coming up. And you sh uh, usher me out the door. I had a hard time getting clients. Yeah, that's tough. So I went back to my church one day, second floor, pacing the hallway going, God, how do I help Matt? Because I know I can. And he gave me an idea. He said, take all of your marketing strategies and put them in a book. And so I did. I published my book on marketing back in 2013. Then I would call you, say, Matt, I, I think I can help you with your marketing. You sit in a meeting. I'd mail a copy of my book to you. A week later, I'd walk into your office, and there it was. My book was on your desk, dog-eared, highlighted, under. You'd read my book. And in that meeting, Matt, you'd say, now, Michael, in your book, you said, how do you help me do that? And you'd hire me. And I started gaining clients. And I thought, well, this is really cool. Why don't more business owners do this? <laughs> well, I don't know if you've written a book yet or not, but it's, it's challenging. It's got a lot of pieces and parts to it. So we created a company that today is Paperback Expert, where we help business owners, experts, thought leaders create a book without writing a word to become the expert in the eyes of their audience. And then we teach them our marketing systems of how to use their book to gain clients, get referrals, and grow their revenue. That's what I do. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. But that's what I get to do all day, every day, is serve business owners and experts and really help them grow their business by separating them from all their competitors. I love that. I love that. Yeah, a lot. How many small businesses out there like that struggle, especially starting out? Oh, that, almost every know, How to get? I mean, how do you? It's like putting the cart before the horse, or the uh, something along those lines, where you or you got to have experience or getting a job, right? Like I, in the early '90s, I was trying to get bartending jobs, and uh, you needed experience to get bartending jobs. But how do you get a job without? Yeah. You know, you don't have experience. You get, so you got to find the ones that say no experience necessary. But, right. uh, but yeah, so, uh, but yeah, building that authority. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? It's about uh, finding a way to establish yourself as an authority and that you know what you're talking about in a book. I think that's, no, I, you asked me if I, if I've written a book, I technically, um, I back okay. back in the two thousand te technically in the two thousands I was really heavy into writing but it was like usually uh, shorter like reports like twenty thirty page little ebooks and stuff on topics um, I would spin my experience into that but it was in in and then I was I got known for a particular guide mm -hmm. so it was kind of a book uh, on how to uh, promote affiliate programs with pay per click. Uh, okay, with Google yeah. AdWords, and that started as like one of those twenty-page reports that turned into a fifty-page ebook, turned into a two-hundred-page guide, and I sold that for like five, six years. But it's more of a guide. It was like more of a how to do okay. this thing. It wasn't about Matt Levenhagen's experience or expertise, although I could leverage that because um, that's my knowledge. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, but I in today I think about that a lot. I think about um, you know. Uh, whittling out that time to to write a book what would it look like um how would i you know how would i go about it i mean i i do okay i mean i we're very much into content social media we do a lot of networking and we got um, a good business coming in and and at a good level but at the same time what could a book do for me you know could it take me to another level um but what do you what do you say so let's say you're working with a a new business and you know how do you guide that person to figure out what they're what does that book look like for them? Or is it, is it tuned to, is there a specific formula for a book or is it different for everybody? Yeah, uh, both and in that the yeah. first thing we always do, well, first of all, I tell you, Matt, never write a book. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and the reason I say that is it'll take you forever to actually try to type it out. We have a process called speak to write where one mm -hmm. of our writers interview you because you have everything in your head to create a book. Our job in talking with you is helping you craft it and get it out of your head and into print. And then our writers actually do the writing in your book. Oh, home. wow. That's nice. Because yeah. busy, busy business owners who I work with don't have time to try to write because you're not a writer. You might, you've done a lot of writing, but that's not where you make your money, right? Yeah. So, and if you don't hire me, then open up Word or Google Doc and use the dictate function 
and speak into the, the computer and it will dictate it. Well, all right, now you've got your content at least out. There's 60% of the work done. Now go back and massage it and edit. So never write a book. Always speak to write your book. Now, going back to really answer the question, we always start with creating a compelling message. Because without a compelling message, and this is why business owners struggle in marketing, is they don't have a message that resonates with their audience. They're what I call a coffee bean. Okay, I love coffee, Matt. Drink it every day. You pour coffee beans on, on your table in front of you. They all look the same. They smell the same. In marketing, businesses typically look like and sound like their competitors. You're not giving me a reason to step in and to say, tell me more. Okay, so we always start with creating a compelling message, clarifying your message. I, I, I'm convinced that every business owner has a story to tell about why they do what they do and what makes them different. Okay, real fast case case story. Can I do a case story real quick? Absolutely. Yep. Got a um, attorney, personal injury attorney down in Florida. He grew up in the north in the Northeast. Went to Florida for a baseball scholarship. And second year into the scholarship, he threw his arm out. He was a pitcher, threw his arm out, kicked him off the team, pro career is done. He goes, has to get surgery, rehab, all of that, graduates from college, decides to become a personal injury attorney. Now he's helping people who have injuries and go through stuff, right? Oh, and I asked him, I said, William, have you ever told that story to anybody? And he's like, no. I said, we're going to, because he's on TV he does, and he's in a market with two big gorillas. I mean, these, these other competitors are spending like a hundred thousand a month in marketing. He's spending like 20. And so I said, okay, great. Here's what we're going to do, William. And we rebranded him and gave him a message and his book came out. It's called when life throws you a curveball." baseball player turned attorney. Oh, and nice. what we do is tell the story, that story I just told you in detail. And basically William says, I've been where you are. Life threw me a curveball. Now he's a pitcher, get it? Curveball. And I was able to, to navigate that. I want to help you when life throws you a curveball. If you're hit by a truck, if you slip and fall, get bit by a dog, whatever it is, I'm here because I've been there. Dude, it's changed his entire business and marketing because we discovered a message that's unique to him. That's where we always start. Every business owner has it. We get in and find it, number one. Then we take that through our speak to write process. We create the book and the book is really, what are the questions your audience asks you on a regular basis? What is your process? What is your expertise? Why are you different than everybody else? Yeah. And then from there, we create your book and then we publish you to be an Amazon bestselling author. And then we teach you our marketing systems to monetize your expertise, to attract the right type of on profile prospect, how do you precondition them to hire you before you ever have a call with them? And then how do you use your book to get referrals from your happy clients? That's a big process, but we always start with clarifying your message. That's the key here. Here's a tip. If you're taking, if you're listening, take notes. It's more important what you say than where you say it. You can take a bland message anywhere and it's going to fall on deaf ears but when life throws you a curveball now he can he can take that message anywhere right yep. so it's more important what you say your message is critical that's why we always start there and that message is different for every person does that make yeah. sense did that answer that question uh yeah yeah pretty thoroughly okay. actually okay. yeah i mean when i think of well, when I, when I, I, I try to relate it to myself too. And as I think about, um, even though I don't have a book, I have a story Yes. and how that plays a role in, you know, the partnerships that I create or the people that, you know, do become my clients or whatever. Um, it oftentimes does stem from that story. And maybe it's the story that somebody else knew, learned about me that they communicated that to somebody else, a referral or whatever. It's a story that kind of percolates through the network. And, um, and I think, you know, when I'm, whether I'm selling myself, my service just to work with us, it's about what's, what's Matt's journey, you know, why, why am I different? And I tried, I do try to communicate that um, through our copy and through our conversations. And then it's those little micro stories too. Like that's how I can relate to somebody about a specific problem 
because I've probably been there and done that, or I've, go, I've, I've, I've had that same pain point. I've over, this is how I overcame it, or this is how we can help you. Yeah, it's exactly yeah. what, if, if you and I were to go out to a coffee shop and spend an hour or two, what would we do? We'd try to find common ground, right? Yeah. You asked me at the beginning who I was. What did I tell you? Yeah, I'm a follower of Christ, been married 32 years. I've got four kids. I've, I've done foster care. I've done adoption. I've, do, I've struggled in my marriage. I tell those micro stories as you talk about because somewhere somebody's going to relate to one or more of those and go, oh, I like you. You're like me. Another nugget, righty? People are going to buy you, Matt, more than what you do for them. There are a lot of web development companies out there, but mm -hmm. I'm going to choose you because I like you. You resonate with me. That's what I call credibility marketing. It's sharing your stories. It's sharing your process. It's drawing people in and being real and genuine. When yeah. you do that in your marketing, it makes it so much easier. But look at most marketing out there. That's not what people are doing. Yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, so yeah, number one, uh, it was why I think back at, so I, I did sales in my twenties yeah. mainly. Um, cause I was an insurance agent. I did other, I was in other sales organizations and learned a lot about selling, read a lot of books, read a lot of, you know, how to sell people and sell selling to some people is a dirty word, but, uh, but it's really what we're doing on a daily basis. Uh, we're, we're selling some aspect of what we're doing. But one of the things that, you know, uh, what you're talking about there, it kind of resonated, you know, kind of finding that common ground. And that's really, really important. Like with me, when I'm starting to work with a client, I want to have that intro call. I want to get to know you. It's even with my team, it's the same way. I want to build relationships beyond just what we're doing for tasks every day. And, but one of the things you learn as a salesperson, if you, if you go into a house, so for a while, for a couple of years, I was doing life insurance where I'd go to a person's house, I'd set up the appointments at home, calling, making, you know, cold calls and going through my script and set up the appointments. And, um, but I'd go to the house. And one of the things though, that you learn is that when you walk into somebody's house, you look around, you're observant, you try to find cues as to what you might have in common with that person or could talk to that person. And as if you can connect on something, something that's on their, on their shelf, maybe it is a baseball, you know, it's yeah. a signed baseball for some reason. And you're a baseball fan. That's where you're going to connect. That's it. That is a good, that's a human way of inter. It sounds almost manipulative, ma manipulative in a little yeah. way, but it's, it's really just about the if friends do that. You know I mean? You got to find, like you said, find that, th those things that are in common. Yeah. You, you talk about your intro, you know, and, oh, okay. Yeah. I can relate to that or I can relate or I don't, <laughs> right. but whatever the case, but you're, you're shooting for that. That's, and, here, yeah. and here's the deal. Here's the deal in marketing and in business, because we're always selling, right? When did that happen? That happened, Matt, when you came face to face in the first meeting with that client. Today in our marketing, many times that happens on Zoom, right? We, mm -hmm. we have a Zoom conference mm -hmm. and we're looking for that and we're trying to build relationship and rapport. And that's all well and good. But why don't you do that before that appointment ever happens? When somebody books an appointment with you, why don't you put a copy of your book in the mail or send them the ebook? E yeah. Or do a video series. If you don't have a book, do a video series where they get to know. I, I, I was on call yesterday, Matt. And I, I met this lady one time about three weeks before. We had a short conversation. She invited me to be on her podcast. Between those two meetings, I had sent her two Loom videos, which I do a lot of. I sent her a thank you in yeah. the mail. I sent her a gift in the mail. She got on the call yesterday. She said, I feel like I know you. I just smiled. I said, good. That's what it's about. That's because fantastic. Yeah. Th yeah. But that's mar that's credibility marketing. Am I selling her on myself? Because once once I break down all those barriers, now we can really talk about how can I help you? What's your situation? What are you trying to make happen? Do I have a solution? Because if I don't, I'm going to refer you. I had a call this morning, Matt. Somebody came on. They wanted to become an Amazon bestselling author of a book they wrote. In a very short period of time, I realized that is not the best move for them. And I told them, I said, that, no, don't do that. Go this route instead. Something I don't do. I connected them with two other people who can help them. Okay. Mm. Because that's how business should function. Yep. But it's, it's, it's building the relationship, what I call preconditioning them to hire you before you get on that sales call. Because then you want them showing up going, I know, Matt, dude, I, 
if 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 we connect as well in person as we did on the videos and things, he's my guy. I just have a few questions. Good. That's a totally different call, right? I, I'm not a salesperson. My my closing question, yeah. Matt, what would you like to do? That's the closing question yeah, I have. Name. By that time, it's we know. I think that's what a lot of people make the mistake of trying to hard sell everybody. Or it's like, I got to pitch them or get And that's all they think about during the whole conversation. You need to forget about that. And it's, it's all about just, yeah, uh, letting it happen. One of the things I'd like to just uh, before, so I don't forget. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cause I'm not getting any younger, you know, it's <laughs> brain am I, <laughs> um, you, brother. but no, I, one of the things you did when we first, we first talked and I, you followed up with an, uh, uh, an email um with a video in it yes uh, loom video loom um and talking about whatever you're we talking about but that's something i'm seeing actually more of and i think it's there the tools are there now today uh it's so easy to make a loom video or even uh whatever some kind of recording whatever you're using for recording and there's another guy there's a uh, from pod match actually yeah Alex. that he's every time he reaches out to me it's a video a personalized video talking to Matt. Yes. And, and he, and he's done that on such a high level. Like, I feel like I know the guy now, like we're, you know, where he's like my new best friend. Yeah. Another example of that is, and I saw this used a little bit differently. This was on Facebook. I don't go on Facebook too often, but, but um, you know, you're served ads and stuff, you know, yeah, yeah. to you, things related to you. And this was, um, I want to say it was Hello Woofy, but was a, I think it was a social platform. I, I might have been that. It might have been something else. But I just I cracked up because I was like, so was this really popular? It was it was a it was an ad, and so sponsored ad, and but all these comments underneath. He was replying to every single comment with a video, like maybe a minute. There but you he go. was replying. I'm like. What is this guy doing? Is he nuts? You know how much time that's going to take to like go and create a video for, but he's probably got a really quick process to turn those around. I'm like, but at the same time, what a really unique way to communicate and build a relationship and, and show up and, and rebuttal whatever's, you know, whatever they're saying on, on the, like instantly yeah. you have a really different connection with somebody when, when you see their face and they see their personality and. You yeah, really so, do. Yeah. And and it's so it's so easy to do. And we've built systems to help our clients do exactly what I do because it's yeah. so powerful and impactful. And I we probably get there are there are two or three marketing things we do, systems that we get such great feedback from. That's one of them. And people are just blown away. And I'm like, it's really simple, but that's yeah. how most marketing really is. It's simple when you have a system and the right tool. And yeah, Loom, I I mean, I think last year they they told me at the end of the year I did um, 367 looms last year. Nice. That's more than one a day. And I want to use it during yeah. the week because yeah, I'm yeah. using it all the time yeah. because it's so personal and to make connections, right? I can, connect, I've connected you with a couple of people. I'm pretty sure I did that through loom. It just takes, yeah. So becoming personal, let people know who you are and just show up, show up as authentic and genuine and it takes so much of the pressure off marketing to yeah. go, just, just be you. Let me know who yeah. you are. How can you help me? And then maybe I'll have a conversation. And, and be, the good, the, be, be the good you. Don't be the like the. Oh, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, I <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I think about that. I'm like, yeah, just be yourself. Be authentic. Or maybe not for you, though. Maybe yeah, you maybe need to tweak, tweak that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like the good points parts of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the other thing that I, and, and we're just going all over the place, but one of my pet okay. peeves is when I hit a website, the call to action on most websites right now is schedule a call. And I'm here to tell you that's Guilty. not the best, what, that's not the best call to action. You should always have it up there, right? But I'm not ready to do it. People are researching. Give mm -hmm. me an opportunity to opt into one of those reports that you've done or a video series or something so that I can, you know, I, I call it the alphabet maze. I, I wrote about it in my, in my book. Think about it, the alphabet of A to Z, right? In business, we want to take a prospect from A to Z, happy client, as fast as we can. But between A and Z, there's a great big B through Y that they have to go through at their pace. 
Some people are ready to go today, but yeah. most people, usually 97% of the people in the market are not in the market today to buy what you have to sell. They're researching. Give them the opportunity to opt into your list, to your video, to your free report, and educate them. Always, always, always giving them an opportunity to connect with you, but make sure there's more than one call to action on your website. Don't, I'm not ready to have a call with you yet. It's too big of a step. So mm -hmm. just thoughts. Pet peeve. Yeah, no, and, and, and that's something you got to play with, though. It's not, it's not, um, having built lots of websites over the years and had lots of opt ins and, and incentives for people to sign up. You have to, you have to play with it to, to find your audience and find that, that thing that people are going to sign up for. And I, and I, I test that. I, I have the call link, but I also have a, a, uh, to a little course that they can sign up for. And okay. I've been experimenting with that over time, but that's, but at the same time I'm watching that. Are people actually, you yeah. know, landing on there to get that, or do I need to tune that or change that or test different things? Always. <clears throat> but, but it's always about testing and, and trying to do that and trying to figure out uh, where you're, who is finding your website? I find one of the things you now, I know I'm, I'm sure there's a, you can write a book, but there's uh, other things that you can do as well to build your authority. And oh, totally. it's not just your website. It's like one, a lot of times that um, like for me, um, you know, I do a lot of social media and stuff and, and, but one of the things that's really, I found that's when somebody is ready to start, like investigating you a little bit more. Maybe they have some work that they need. They're, they're looking for somebody to help them. Um, they do start doing some Google searches on you and they, they find your website. They find, Oh yeah, I, I literally had a client last year who I'm still, we have still have a monthly contract with them. We're doing, we, you know, we're done a lot for them, uh, but it started by him. Like just, uh, he was re he was referred by somebody, but he still did that research to find oh, yeah. out what Matt was all about. So having a footprint online too, of so people can learn about you, whether that's videos and and other content and stuff, that's really helpful as well. And in that case, he was like, he even told me, he said, you know, Matt, I did some research on you, and you're everywhere. You're you're super popular. I'm like, yeah, yeah sure, yeah. I'm just well, I'm just everywhere. I don't want to be popular, but that's um, right. But but it's but that goes hand in hand with that. I think that's a good starting point. But the, you know the book too, though, is uh, that's uh, I, I keep going back to that because I keep thinking about that one of these days. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so. so here's here's the deal with what you just said. Be everywhere, but draw yeah. everywhere back to a central hub. Mm -hmm. So when I'm so you go to my website, my LinkedIn, you Google my name, you go to YouTube or Google my business, it's going to be super consistent. And we drive yeah. everybody back to our website because to me, that's that's the hub for me, all right? If you have a, a book, everything should drive back to the book, whether it's a website or a landing page. If you've got a video training series, everything you're doing should drive back to that because that simplifies marketing. Too many times business owners say, well, I've got to do this and this and that and that. And they have seven different things with seven different calls to action and they're pulling their hair out. It's like, time out, simplify, be there. Yeah. Yeah. But bring all the funnels back to one big thing that you're known for. Get people to opt in, communicate through email, videos, and trainings and all. It makes marketing so much simpler. But yeah, when somebody says, hey, you're everywhere, that's great because, well, you know this. Google your name. Everybody listen. Just go and Google your name. Usually, the first thing that pops up is your LinkedIn profile. Now, go to your LinkedIn profile, and I would lay money that it looks like everybody else's. Mm. And that is a bunch of blah, blah, blah. Then here's my channel. Go to my LinkedIn profile, Michael Delon. Go to that and look at that and see if it's not different. Because I'm trying to build credibility. I'm I'm I built my profile to speak to my audience. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that's a big place. Then they're going to go to your website. Then they're going to go to YouTube. Then they're going to consistency over time on all the platforms is really really important. And you don't have to have a book to do it. I think a book's great, obviously, but just having a book is not enough. You've got to know how to market yourself with that book to gain clients and use right. that book. So, um, yeah, that's we need to talk about point. getting your book done, but that's another. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Later. Yeah. yeah, no, I it, I think um, people underestimate um, 
you know, the, everyone talks about, you know, social media, putting content out there and being consistent and doing all that stuff. It's not easy to do. I mean, you, you know, I, I luckily I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have help to do that, uh, to keep me on track, yeah. um, with a lot of that stuff. But, but it's, it's also that long game, you know, um, uh, you, people are, are observing you that you, I'm going to give you an example here, a, a, a mind blowing story. Well, mind blowing for me. Uh, I've been been around the web for like 20 years, right? And back in the 2000s, like I was talking about, I had digital products. I was doing a lot of stuff online, right? Um, I was everywhere. I was in forums. I was, you know, I've always been everywhere. I've just, you know, I love the internet. Um, but so you don't, but I'm just doing my thing, minding my business, minding my own business. But this, uh, this year, um, I met somebody on, they reached out to me on LinkedIn and we got on a call and uh, they, they have an agency uh, and locally here in the Milwaukee area. And he reached out to me. He's like, you know, I remember you mm. from when you were, you know, like whatever, however many, cause he's been in the business for like 26 years. So he, he remembers Matt because I was geographically tied. So when you do searches on things, Matt would show up. Right. Uh, in the Milwaukee area. And I didn't even think about local. I mean, I'm only, re you know, in recent years, even thought about local stuff because I'm just everywhere. Um, but, but that really just, I, I just paused. I'm like, who's listening to me right now that in five years, 10 years, that becomes like, that turned into, by the way, a really great partnership. We yeah. were starting out, but we're working on some big projects. Uh, but that is, that is just one, one example where you don't know who's what, you know, like who's actually seen your stuff. Like I think about Instagram, we're terrible on Instagram. We have like 97 followers for the last like a uh, year and we just can't figure it out, but we're just posting, we're still posting custom stuff there and we're doing it. But we look at, I look at that as a brand too. And, and that somebody sees that they don't care about the follower count. They see it's, but who's actually watching that? Maybe who's somebody who saw that, you know, and, and that can translate into uh, some great relationships. And um, Absolutely. so, yeah, all of that, that's, that's really cool. Especially um, when you have, especially when you have a really clear message that's compelling to your audience, right? I always go back to message because I see a lot of people posting on Facebook and LinkedIn all the time and do their, their messages, blah, blah, blah. Learn these four things. How about this? Learn the, and it's just like, good golly, tell me something compelling. So when you have a compelling message that resonates with your audience, then you can do that so much easier, right? right? And so that's why we always start with message. So get your message crystal clear, and then all the platforms start working better because your audience is everywhere. They're on yeah. all the platforms. You don't have to be on all the platforms, but you can be. But if you don't have a great message, right. you're just kind of yeah. spinning your wheels. So. so yeah, so I'm going to pivot a little bit here. So I, I had a recent conversation with somebody, um, Christina Hooper. Uh, she was on this podcast uh, several episodes ago, and um, one of the, we were actually the whole episode was actually about telling stories. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that she, I said we were we have her come on and we're going to tell tell her entrepreneurial story, and she's like you know, her story's boring. She doesn't have this exciting, like my life went down into the tubes. I was in jail. And then I had this huge moment. I met this singular person and they took me. And then I went on, like, she doesn't have this amazing comeback, you know, story or whatever. And I would imagine that's probably common. And we talked about that and how to overcome that and how to actually approach that a bit. But what is, what is your advice to somebody that like they're, they're looking at their life or like, I don't even understand what that story is. Like, I don't have anything exciting in my life. I don't have anything that, um, that my, pers my perspective clients would even care about. Um, how do you get them over that to, Dude, to where do you tease that story out? I talk with them. We've got a process. We ask eight questions, very specific. They answer the questions. Here's a story. Let me tell you another case story. I had a home right. inspector come to me. Okay. That's a pretty commoditized business, home inspectors, right? He came to me, he says, Michael, I, I want to be an Amazon bestselling author. I want to change my business. I'm like, great. Started talking to him. What do you do? So he tells me about home inspection. I said, okay, what do you, what else do you do? What do you like? What's your hobbies? He's like, well, on nights and weekends, I'm a football referee for high school. I love that. I've got my team. We go, we travel. We get, I mean, he lit up. 
And he started telling me that football refereeing and home inspection go side by side because they all they have rules and they have flags and they have penalties and all. And I'm like, dude. So we stopped the game and we said, okay, Chris, we're going to publish your book. Here's his book, The Official Guide to Home Inspections. We branded him America's Home Inspection Referee. Nice. Now, yeah. When he goes out on a home inspection, when he goes into the realtor's office where he gets a bit, he's wearing his uniform, his referee uniform, right? It took something that was bland and boring that he never connected the dots. And we looked at it and said, oh, dude, that's your story now. Does he have anything to post on social media ever? Does he have any stories? Hey, hey I, was, I was refereeing the football game the other night between you know these two teams. And here's what happened. And it reminded me that when I was inspecting this house, I realized that the GFCI wasn't quite in the right place. Or When you get ready to buy your house, make sure that your home inspector is the um, is America's home inspection referee. I mean, it's just <sighs> unheard of. Yeah, yeah. So it, you have a story, but you're too close to it. Take a friend out to Starbucks. Have them ask you questions about your background, your hobbies. Why? How'd you get into doing this? Everybody has a story to tell. You just think your story's boring. Tony, this guy, Chris, he would never have connected the dots. It's brilliant. He stands apart from everybody else. His prices are higher than everybody else because he's America's home inspection referee. You expect to pay more. It's you have a story within you. Take a friend out to coffee. Let them ask you lots of questions. Record it all. And then listen back to the themes that your story tells you and start camping there. But you need somebody else looking from the outside in. It's just hard to do it yourself. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I like, lo- well, I mean, there's, you're looking at what you're doing and what you're passionate about too. And what you get excited, like you said, you get you're oh. excited about that. Totally. Like how can you, how can you blend those two things together and, and, and map those two things? Because when you do, then you come to life and your marketing yeah. changes and people go, Oh, you actually like what you do. Okay, I'll mm-hmm. work with you. Because how many business owners are really stuck in prison and they just do it because they have to do it? It's like, no, get away from me. I want to work with passionate people. Yeah. That's, why I, that's why I think I, uh, what I get out of call with, you know, prospective client or or, or one of my clients, like I, I get ramped up about what we're that's doing sick. because I've been, I, I, I'm a nerd, right? Like, yeah. What does Matt get excited about? I get excited. I literally do get excited about websites. I know <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Or that button we're talking about buttons or on your website. That's, I, I think you can improve that one button. Absolutely. I can tell you how to do that. I can tell you. Um, but, and it might make I, a know, I get excited. And I, but I think like, like people pick up on that. They want to work with somebody that is passionate about it. That is, that cares about what they're doing is obsessed with it. Without question. Yeah. And, and I'll, yeah. I'll go back to somebody we all know, Tony Robbins. Mm, yep. how, how different would our lives and his life be if he would have come out years ago and he said, live with passion? <laughs> no, Tony's like, live with passion. Right? I mean, he just exudes it and we're drawn to him because of that. Yeah, yeah you got to love what you do. and share. You don't have to be as wacky as I am. I mean, I tend to be a pretty passionate guy. But even a C. No, no, no. <laughs> we couldn't tell. Yeah, we couldn't there's, tell. There's no. No. Turn it up, Michael. No. Turn it up. But no, I, even, love, I love your energy. But I'll, I'll let you thank feel. you. Right. Um, but just be yourself. And everybody has a story. And we resonate yeah. with stories. Tell your story. Share, be you. Be real. Stop yeah. following whatever all the gurus are telling you. Here's, here's a great piece of advice I got from Dan Kennedy years ago. Marketing guru, right? Look at how everybody else is marketing and run the other direction. Do exactly the opposite because everybody's doing it. I can tell, by the way, when Matt, when when people take a course, like on a LinkedIn outreach or Facebook, out, I can tell when the course graduates because my inbox starts getting popped with all of the same types of messages, all of the same scripts. Mm-hmm. And it's like, really? Would you Just stop copying it? copying what everyone else is doing, yeah. yeah. Would yep. you stop it? <laughs> Just be you. Reach out and say, hey, I saw what you were doing. I saw your profile. I was checking you out. I got... I got a couple pieces of information. Is it okay if I share it with you? Yeah. Most most people say, well, yeah, sure. And then you just, you're very genuine. Say, you know, I'd love to talk sometime, build a relationship. I may know somebody who can help you. Let's connect. Yeah. And, most- and like I said, it's, 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 it's also just, um, it's, it's being talking to somebody like they're 
somebody you just meet on, on the street or whatever, you don't just start pitching them. Like that happens a lot on social media, especially LinkedIn. Uh, like you get messaged all the time. They go right into the pitch. This is what I can do for you. We yeah. do this X, Y, Z. Here's a list, a bullet list of all the things we can do for you. We can, we have your business. Um, uh, that doesn't really work that way. Um, if, even the people that follow you are like, they, they, they want to friend you and they start with the pitch yeah. Like if, if you're, I'll actually be more likely to probably follow you back. If you had no pitch, you like said nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I tell people, you know, when, when you meet people, if you go to a networking event, don't think about it as like being at the chamber of commerce or the industry event where you're trying to, you know, position and posture. Think about it as going to your child's seventh birthday party. Right. And you, you're inviting <laughs> some friends and people and the parents that you don't know. How would you act there? That's how you should probably act at a networking event. You know, just yeah. get to know you, Matt. Who are you? Tell me about really. Dale Carnegie wasn't it him. Win, how to win friends and influence people. Yes. Book, yeah. He said he's a. He, everybody saw him as a great conversationalist. He's like, all I do is ask a question and let them talk, because everybody wants to talk about themselves. And so in networking events, yeah. do the same thing. Matt, tell me about you. What What do you do? How, yeah. Really? How long have you been doing that? Wow. What are you trying to accomplish? And you're just taking mental notes. You know what? We mm -hmm. should connect. Let me Let me connect with you on LinkedIn, and we'll reach out. Okay. Do you know where that might lead? It might, yeah. It yeah, it's might. a numbers game. But you know what? <laughs> I may not be ready to serve you, or you may not be ready mm -hmm. for my service. That's okay. Before this, this podcast, I said, hey, I'm going to invite you to my credibility networking monthly event. Absolutely free. You're going to meet some people. You're going to make some connections, right? That's what I want to be about. I want to help you grow your business. And guess what happens when I do that? I gain emotional capital with you. Yeah. Right. I'm not asking you to buy. Yeah. I'm inviting you to something. And you and I may never do business together. That's okay. I'm totally cool with that. Because you know people who need my services. And down the road, someday you're going to say, you need to talk to Michael. Because you've been thinking about doing a book. And he can help you get it done in under 24 hours of your time. Do, get, call him. Michael, here, you're going to introduce me. To, I think, Great. I love that. Yeah. So it's it's thinking about the long game, being true, being genuine, and saying, how can I help you? And you know what? It's, it's hard for me to help you, Matt. If I don't know who you are. So put the relationship first and the profits will follow. Relationships first and the profits will follow. That is a great message to end on. <laughs> so, Michael, if somebody wanted to find you and they wanted to reach out to you and, uh, you know, dig you up on social media or on the web somewhere or or what's the best way for somebody to connect with you and, and uh, start a discussion? Great question. Paperbackexpert.com is the hub of all things Michael. <laughs> so you'll get there <laughs> from there. You can connect with me everywhere. You can see what we do. Paperbackexpert.com. That's too easy. <laughs> well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, it's great having you on the show. Yeah, it's um, so much I fun. It's fantastic. I love talking about stories and all this stuff. It's it's great because it's so impacting. It's such a a simple kind of you know change of mind to yeah. start thinking like figuring out what your story is because like I said, people resonate with that. And you want to people want to get to know you, and uh, you got to differentiate yourself in the market. And Absolutely, that's one that's, way to do it. That's for sure. the best way to do it is tell your story because it's unique yeah. to you. Man, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. You bet. And thank you, Builders Crew. Until next time. That's all for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed that. Again, please subscribe if you haven't already and give us a thumbs up if we deserve it. If you want to comment on this episode's page, provide me with requests on topics for future episodes, or inquire about being a guest, please find your way to thebuilders.fm. You can contact me there or add a comment under these show notes. Now a word from our sponsor, my agency, Unified Web Design. We build custom websites, features, we maintain websites, we work with agencies to fulfill their web design and development needs, and more. If you're interested in our services or are looking for an agency to work with as a partner to build awesome sites for your clients, feel free to reach out to me at unifiedwebdesign.com. There's a handy contact me link at the top, fill out that form and it will open a ticket and that ticket will find its way to me. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next time.